Rough, rough videos. Hi, I'm Ms. Kelly's ILS students. I miss you guys, and I'm here today to read a couple fun stories. This time when we read them, we're gonna kind of just read through them and have fun. When you're at home and you're reading with um, your parent or your caregiver, it's great to take pause at different pages and point out things, but we're just gonna have more fun reading these two. But first, let's take a deep breath in. Inhale up. And exhale down. Inhale up. And exhale down. Okay, the story that I've chosen is Skippy John Jones in Mummy Trouble, and the author is Judy Shoshner. So, let's sit down, and we'll see what little uh, Skippy John Jones gets into this time. Skippy John Jones did his very best thinking outside the box. And this twisted his mama's whiskers tighter than a Texas tornado. Hey, you, Mr. McPoo, said Mama Junebug Jones. Just what do you think you're doing? McPoo didn't say boo. He was too busy reading. Hey, little digger, I'm talking to you, said Mama, scooping up her boy. A pyramid outside the litter box will never, ever do. Then... She saw his magazine. National Leo Graphic, mused Mama, and the curse of the cat mummy. Why, this will give you nightmares. Boy with an upset tummy too, plus a puffy tail, and the grandest scale. This story is taboo. But Skippy John Jones was in no mood to listen to his mama. So he skedaddled into his room. For a really good bounce on his big boy bed. He bounced once. He bounced twice. And the third time he bounced, he said, Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones. And I do love my mummy, but if I don't bounce, I get knots in my tummy. Then the kitty boy flipped over to the mirror for a looky see. Holy smokito! exclaimed Skippy John Jones. I know you, he said in the to the doggy in the mirror. Your ears are too big for your head. Your head is too big for your body. You are not a Siamese cat. Then, using his very best Spanish accent, he added, You are still the big chihuahua dude. The whole enchilada. And they just might like enchiladas in Egypt, thought Skippy. So the kitty boy doned his mask and cape and began to sing in a moy soft voice. My name is Capito Fresquito, and I'm off to see old Egypto. <laughs> Egyptito, sorry. My chicos insist, and I dare not resist the chance to go meet a mamito. In the meantime, his little sisters, Jezebel, Jilly Boo, and Jujubee, rolled into his room with a plan of their own. But the kitty boy was already deep inside his closet on his way to ancient Egypt. And paddling down the River Nile, who should sail right past but a kooky crocodile hunkered down on his lumpy, bumpy back were all of his old amigos, the chimichangos pack. Adonde vas? called out Skipito. We are going to the Undermundo, answered the chihuahuas. <gasps> Not to the underwear, exclaimed Skipito. No, 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 said the puchitos. You silly little beast, 
to the underworld where momitos rest in peace. Peace, exclaimed Skipito. Who wants to sleep in peas? We do, said the doggies. We hear they are to die for. You mean they are better than frijoles? Asked Skipito. Si, mucho mejor, señor, said Poquito Tito. Vamonos, said Skipito. What are we waiting for? But then Don Diego, the biggest of the small ones, spoke up. Hold your ponies, Pepito. To get to the Undermundo, we first have to answer the riddle of the Finks. But I'm not good at riddles, said Skipito. No problema, said Poquito Tito. You have a muy big brain. Then they set forth from the Rio Nile to find the Finks. The muchachos began to sing. Skippy, skippoo, skippito. We only have one chance, Arito, to pass by the Finks, so don't be a jinx, just answer the riddle, dum dito. The muchachos arrived at four o'clock sharp, but the Finks had been waiting forever. Don't let the gato get your tongue, dude, said Don Diego. What cat? Where? asked Skippito. That cat there, said the parritos, pointing to the finks. But before he could say anything, the great finks spoke. Whose ears are too big for his head, and who loves to go bounce on his bed, who creeps on all fours through his own closet door, straight into the land of the dead. Skipito knew the answer to this riddle, but he was so nervous he coughed up a little fur ball. You call that an answer, dude? said Don Diego. The answer, bellowed the Finks. So with his permission, the parritos were free to pass onto the tomb of King Rootin Tootin Kitten Kabootin. When they finally reached the pyramid, the doggies burst into song and dance. O oh, si, o oh, se, a siris, our boy had a touch of the virus. He coughed up a ball, so the finks made a call, and now it's inscribed on papyrus. Oh. But when Skipito saw how dark it looked in the pyramid, he began to feel queasy. My tummy hurts, he groaned, and my tail is getting puffy too. But his chicos would not comfort him. They just wanted their peas, por favor. Are you not El Scapito Frisquito, the great sword fighter? asked Poquito Tito. Si, sí, declared Skipito. That is me. Then do your duty, dog, commanded Don Diego. So Skipito drew a deep breath and dove into the darkness of the musty old tomb, chanting, Peas, por favor, peas, por favor. Peas, por favor. He rocketed through the vault like a fur-covered comet until suddenly, smackito, Skipito hit a wall and knocked himself out cold. Soon after, three goddesses emerged from the shadows to prepare the kitty boy for his journey to the Undermundo. First, we salt and pepper him, said Ba, the first goddess. And sprinkle him with lucky charms, said Da, the second one. Then we wrap him and roll him and bundle him tight, and said Bing, the third goddess, and blow him a kiss and say nighty night. Then the trio rolled the wrapped cat down the ramp into the king's bur burial chamber. Across the room stood the 4,000-year-old sarcophagus of King Rootin Tootin, Kitten Kabootin, and just as they were about to deliver El Skipito Mamito, he rolled right into the feet of the oldy moldy mummy. Bada bing, moaned the king as he stretched out his paws. I need to rest in peace. Peace, screamed El Skipito Mamito, waking up in a flash 
and quicker than you can say mummies, mumps, and measles, he grabbed two paws full of peas and hightailed it home. When Los Chimichangos saw El Escapito Mamito come rolling out of the pyramid, they went into a real tailspin. Then all the doggies began to chant. Green Chicaros hot, green Chicaros cold. Green, the best Chicaros in the world are those that Scapito holds. But El Scapito Mamito was too scared to slow down. So he chucked the peas at his chicos and kept right on running straight into the arms of his mummy. What's the matter, Fuzzy Bug? asked Mama June Bug Jones. Skippy John Jones looked back over his shoulder to see if the three spirits were still chasing him. But a bing, he wailed, dropping the last of the piece. Then three giggling goddesses raced into the room after Skippito with their puppets and a roll of toilet paper. We're going to wrap you and roll you and bundle you tight, they sang, and check you for cooties, then kiss you good night. That night, Skippy John Jones was bouncing on his big boy bed. No mummies in my closet, no mummies in my bed, no mummies in my bookcase, no mummies in my head. Just before he closed his eyes, the kitty boy checked his room one more time for mummies. The only one he saw was his own. I love you, Mommy, said Skippy John Jones. I love you too, Bunny Boots, said Mama Junebug Jones. Now, go to sleep, por favor. The end. Rough, rough videos.